Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I'm going to be continuing to tidy up bits and pieces on the engine of the 911. Okay, so those of you who are watching last week will have seen that I went through and I primed all of these engine bits for the 911, so now it's time to give them a quick scuff and uh, get them ready to put some colour on. So I did some spot putty over all of the sort of little rough bits on this cover. It's not perfect, it's not going to be ideal, but it's, I mean, you see it, but sort of when you're ducking your head in. So it doesn't have to be quite as crazy perfect as the rest of the car. I'm just going to go around and sand these now and get it ready so I can start uh, putting some colour on this thing. So this is all ready to go. I just need a bit of a, uh, a wipe down, a bit of a clean up with Prepsol so that uh, it's all clean and ready to paint. But uh, this panel here, all the, the little spot putty parts are all looking nice or good enough uh, for me. I'm gonna hit this first with a little bit of wet on wet primer just so that it's got a nice even color just to, to cover up some of these uh, little darker spots because um, it may show through the paint, just, I just want a nice even surface and then I can start putting some colour on some bits. And uh, that's probably where some of you are not going to like my choices, as always. So we are all painted up, they're looking uh, looking quite nice. As you can see, I chose the controversial purple for the fan, and these are the lower valve colors. I thought I'd go purple with them because they look a little bit like tartan sort of pattern on them already. You don't really see them, so it doesn't really matter, but uh, unless you stick your head under the car. Um, the top valve covers are black, the center of the fan is black, and um, there's another, the Z badge I wasn't happy with, so I'm just uh, touching that up. But uh, the fan shroud, black, and the main cover is orange. So it is. So I'm gonna let these all set up. The booth is fantastic. It's so nice to actually work in this booth. It, it, it's great. I am really happy with how it turned out. So, uh, all right, moving on back to the engine. All right, moving back to the engine. So where we left off, basically I couldn't fit the chain tensioners because I needed to get a spacer. Now, I looked at actually getting it from Porsche, they had to order it in from Germany and it was just gonna be a pain. Uh, I managed to go down to my uh, just local engineering place, they uh, turned them up on the lathe, so I've got a couple of these little spacers that will work, so now I can uh, fit my oil-fed tensioners and before I do that, I want to prime them. now. You can put them in dry, but I've heard that the people have had issues with that in the past. They get air pockets inside. So the first thing I want to do is actually prime these up and actually get these full of oil before I put them on the, in on the engine and I can button it all up. So uh, I've got these clamps on temporarily, so let's start priming some uh, chain tensioners. 
So priming the tensioner is a relatively straightforward process. Basically on these, uh, on these tensioners, they come with a little pin in it that holds this. This is the actual uh, tensioner. It's a spring loaded little piston here. To uh, undo it, easy way I found is uh, you just press it down on the bench and pull the pin out. You can see that piston has come all the way out. So it's quite easy. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to completely submerge it in the fluid inside a container, pump it against the bench and fill it full of the oil. So I'm filling up now. I'm not getting into uh, oil debates, but this is what I am happy with on these oil cooled engines. I know um, most of the uh, air cooled guys I know like using this. It is a, um, it's a mineral 20W60, um, but the 20W50 is the way to go. Just make sure it's a full zinc oil. That's what I like. So let's start pumping and priming up my chain tensioners. Okay, I have my tensioner. The pin is back in into it. Now I need to install this on the engine and I need to make sure the whole time that I don't let the chain go completely slack. So I need to, basically, if the chain can jump a tooth, the timing can go out and uh, the whole thing can be catastrophic. It's not what we want. So, so let's remove this clamp, keeping tension uh, on the chain while we do it. Install this tensioner and then we uh, should be able to move forward. We have some tension. So now I just need to do the same thing again on the other side. All right, so I've got the tensioners fitted now and they're all looking good. They're all ready. So basically this is pretty much ready to bolt up and cover up the front of this engine. But before I do that, I'm just gonna turn it over just turn it over a couple of times just to make sure that there's no interference, that this hasn't jumped the tooth or something. I, I would actually reset up the dial gauge, but I've already sent that stuff back to Michael De Silva. So thank you very much, Michael. Um, that stuff has, isn't here, but I can at least turn it over, make sure there's no interference, there's no tight spots, there's nowhere where a valve is hitting, and, uh, and then we can start buttoning this all up. So I think that is a good stopping point on the engine now because we've got it to a stage where we need to wait for all that paint to set up that I painted earlier today to uh, get all the covers ready. So I might leave this now, cover the engine back up again and go back and start having a bit more of a look at those fuel lines. All right, so we're moving back now onto the car itself. And like I mentioned last week, I need to replace the fuel lines that go through the center of the car. I, seeing as I'm playing with all the fuel system, People have said that they last forever, but I have heard of them failing, and they are a nylon line that's almost 50 years old, so I think it's time to change it. And I'm gonna use a hard line. Now, some people have already said that changing those lines out is one of the worst jobs that they've ever done on a 911. I'm hoping because I don't have the engine in the car, it's gonna make life a lot easier, and also the fact that I can use a hard line because I believe if the engine's in the car, there's no way to get a straight run at it, but um, generally they'll take them out and put them back in from the front. With the engine out, I've got a straight run out the back, so I'm hoping I can actually straighten this out and uh, run out the back, which means moving over to the bench and um, using the uh, Raceworks straightener to try and get this thing uh, nice, a couple of nice long straight lengths that I can put in the car. Okay, so this is not properly straight yet, but it's very soft aluminium line, so I need to be careful. I haven't, I've just sort of loosely straightened it out. And of course, you can't just cut it because you're gonna crimp it or um, you could use an angle grinder and get it burrs and stuff like that. The best way to uh, cut them is with a uh, tube cutter, pipe cutter. Um, this one's from Raceworks. The same thing that plumbers use and all that sort of stuff. Basically, it's just got a little uh, wheel blade in here. You just tighten it up on these rollers and then just keep rolling around, tighten, roll around, tighten, and you uh, will cut the pipe in part, half. So uh, I'm gonna do that now. I've done, I'm gonna do two two meter lengths, which is, it's probably 
two to 300 mil more than I need, but it's better to have more and not need it than have not enough. So I'm going to go a couple of two meter lengths. That way I can uh, play around with it and trim them off when I get them in the car. So um, let's cut this off and keep straightening. Okay, so right here, this is the old fuel lines. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect them from this end and disconnect them from the back. And at the back, I'm gonna connect up the hard lines to the old fuel lines here. So as I pull these old lines out, I should hopefully be able to pull the new hard lines through. And fingers crossed, it just all goes nice and smooth and it's simple and quick. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Okay, so you can see here I've got one end, it's already through, so it wasn't too difficult. I did manage to get inside the cabin and duck my head inside the footwell and uh, I managed to get through and sort of help guide this through. So now I've just got to do the uh, other side and we should be good. So same again, hopefully this one is the bigger hose, so it should actually be a bit, bit easier. I'm actually using the same dash six line for both inlet and outlet, so uh, it should be pretty good. It's going to step down here down to dash five to go back into the tank. So uh, the flow should all still be, uh, should still be good. It'll still be restricted slightly on the return. And I'm gonna run a fuel pressure regulator, but uh, let's uh, start on the second line. And you can see there that both lines are coming through and I've put nice new rubber grommets on both of them so they're uh, nice and protected and not gonna wear through. And that is it, that's a nice productive day for a change. I feel uh, quite happy with what I got done today. Uh, bought all the engine parts painted, the fuel lines are in and get the oil tensions on the car, on the engine. So we are really moving forward. I am really happy with the progress on the 911. Hopefully next week we can uh, finish buttoning up the fuel pump and then keep closing up the engine. It's getting, it's getting really close. It is getting really close guys. I'm getting really excited. All right, well, that's it for another week. So um, please like, subscribe, Patreon, watch these day, videos a day early, uh, get some merch, link in the description and uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys.